Yo, what's up, Everett? I think uh, you've posed a great question because, you know, philosophy of science is one of the more relevant fields of philosophy, I, I think you could say, because if science concerns collecting uh, knowledge uh, of nature uh, and systematizing it and so on, then uh, we need to find out how to uh, philosophically justify that type of an activity because knowledge um, seems important uh, but the, the problem of induction uh, that science uh, apparently is able to generalize based on specific observations so you know science forms natural laws that uh, purportedly explain reality based on uh, a whole bunch of laboratory experiments. Uh, in other words, very contrived um, and controlled enclosed situations, specific places, specific times, everything arranged in just the right way. Uh, and uses those to generalize into how it is for all of nature at all times in all situations regardless of anything that is contingent um, how do we do that now I think th the key here is um, well not only are we asking how a particular can become a general we're asking how uh, an effect can become a cause. We're talking about uh, abduction, in other words, which is, I think, really closely related to, or maybe even uh, another way of describing or another angle of induction. Um, abduction is when you observe an effect, um, and from that effect infer what the cause may have been, which is, you know, almost identical to induction. Um, and that you know you observe a particular event, and then based on that particular event, you assume what the general, uh, the general law behind it is, or the, the general cause behind the effect is. Um, so we're talking about causality, and we're asking if there are such things as uh, causes and their effects. Uh, and I think. Uh, Another metaphor, maybe for induction or abduction, is questions uh, and answers. The fact that a philosopher or a scientist always has to ask a question, frame an experiment, pose a theory uh, or a hypothesis, an experiment, all of those things, uh, just the scientist has to frame a problem before an answer will be received. And oftentimes, um, if we look at the evolution of science, we see that, uh, you know, the things that we measured for in order to realize that Newton's theory was wrong, uh, we didn't even think of until Einstein came up with his theories of relativity. Um, and so not until a new uh, conceptual framework is brought to the, to the uh, forefront of everybody's attention are measurements taken in order to confirm that the old one or the uh, paradigm we used to assume was true was false um, until we ask the question we do not gain knowledge so the idea then that science is objective that it finds things in nature uh, you know, is true in the sense that it gets what it asks for, but it's always having to pose a question before it learns anything, and the posing of a question, uh, it's sort of, you know, you're commanding nature to obey, certainly when you form uh, an experiment in a contrived laboratory uh, situation or condition, um, you're forcing nature to reveal some secret uh, that it only reveals in the specific situation that you put it into, the specific way that you manipulate it, brings about this result. And that is uh, 
you know, we, we assume through induction uh, capable of giving us a general truth about what nature is in itself. And I, I just want to point out how we can't really say that that's the case. Because any answer we receive to the question we pose to nature or to the world or to reality is always going to be in the terms of the original question. And as we continually ask new questions, uh, we continually gain a different type of understanding of what nature is. Um, so the problem of induction is only a problem if we think science is about certain knowledge. Uh, if we think science is about answering questions, which when you frame it that way, it brings it brings subjectivity back into the picture and, and shows how science is always situated in a certain historical, cultural, uh, biological context. And when you resituate science or embody science into its context like that, um, certainty is no longer relevant, really. Whether or not there is an objective world in independent of our human existence becomes irrelevant. Um, science is about asking questions and getting answers. Um, it can be just as useful, if not more so, when looked at in that type of a way uh, as it is when we assume it's giving us the, the capital T truth about the physical world in and of itself, regardless of our human values and interpretations and meanings. Science isn't outside of humanness, <laughs> of, of meaning making and, and the embodied reality that human beings uh, experience. Science is a behavior and an activity that goes on within that context. Uh, so induction is only a problem if we expect certainty. Uh, I don't really expect certainty. Um, I expect answers to the particular questions that I ask. And if I don't get answers to those questions, if my theories aren't uh, ever proven correct, in other words, then the theory must be wrong and I toss it out, ask a different question. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's what I say.